Denver Airport is a huge airport. They have thousands of departures every single day. United 1736 has an engine failure shortly after takeoff, but it's not your ordinary engine failure because it gets complicated down the road. Let's watch. United 1736, heavy contact departure getting. Now, I have to just make one comment here before we move on with the rest of this video. Um, it may be because good old Captain Steve is getting old, but it just sounds to me like air traffic controllers are sounding younger and younger all the time. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> and the United uh, 1736 uh, declared emergency at the time. It looks like we have, we've got the rollback on engine number two. And we're coming right hand turn zero one zero. Okay, so they declare an emergency. Now this was kind of the old way of doing it. You would just kind of key up the mic and say we're declaring an emergency. The the better way to do it, or the proper way to do it, let me put it that way, is to say mayday, 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 your call sign, and then state what is going on with your aircraft. Uh, after that, there's going to be a sequence of events where air traffic control is going to ask you what your intentions are, how many souls on board, your fuel state. All those things will happen down the road. Right now, these guys just want to make sure they stay airborne and they get pointed in the right direction. So they're in a right-hand turn to 010, and they said they're Number two, that's the right-hand engine, rolled back. I'll describe in a few minutes what a rollback looks like because they're, sometimes they're a little bit different. They're not, two are not exactly the same, right? United 1736 Heavy, roger, maintain, maintain one zero thousand. Maintain 10,000, yeah, 1736. Now, if 10,000 sounds like a, a high altitude for you, remember they're departing out of Denver. Denver's almost at 6,000 feet to begin with, so they're really just clearing them to about 4,000 feet above ground level. Typically, an uh, engine failure on takeoff, you're going to ask for runway heading to about 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet as well within the parameters. Okay, 1736 heavy, maintain 9,000, heading 010 is approved. Contact departure on 126.126.1. They'll get you in. So there's your 3,000 feet above the ground. She's actually going to clear them to 9,000. Okay, 26 one, uh, 9,000, yeah, 17, 36. Okay, what's the crew doing right now? So the crew is flying the airplane, number one. So when an engine rolls back, it could be that there was a temperature exceedance on the engine and they had to grab the, the throttle and actually physically pull it back to make sure it didn't f get too hot and create a fire. It could be that the engine just lost fuel, it lost air, something went wrong with the, one of the computer inputs, the FADEC or something like that, and the engine would roll back. Uh, on my 777, which this is a 777, there's a thing called the EECs. Those are the EECs, and they're kind of like the governors on the engine. They can produce some sort of a rollback on the engine, not a complete flame out, but you wouldn't have uh, full power on the engine. The pilots right now are getting the airplane pointed in the right direction. So as soon as they realize that there's something wrong, the, usually one or the other pilot will say, uh, engine failure, right side, or engine failure, uh, left or right. Uh, at that point, the other pilot at the controls will say, my aircraft, very assertively, to make sure that the other pilot knows who's flying. Because many times, you, both of you can get wrapped up in the problem, and nobody's flying the airplane. So it's very important to say, my aircraft, They've got a vector, they're climbing out, they're probably now beginning to do uh, the checklist that goes with that particular engine failure. The one thing I love about the 777 is that there's an electronic checklist on board and whatever the failure is, it will pop up on your screen automatically for you. You don't have to go heads down into a bunch of manuals looking for the right page and then get the wrong page. It's automatic right on the screen. You just simply hit the checklist button and you begin to work step by step through the procedure to mitigate your issue with this engine or to get the most power out of it or shut it down if you have to. That's what they're in the middle of doing right now. End of part tonight, 1736, emergency, 8.5, climbing 9,000, 0 one 1736, heavy, departure, radar contact, under 10, engine out. Can you make fly in the 350 heading? Engine out the opportunities are 010 for us. I can turn further right at that home. Okay, one of the things you're noticing here is that the voice on the airplane has changed. So typically speaking, uh, the captain now will delineate duties with the uh, first officer. And many times if the captain wants to fly at this point, the captain will say, I've got the airplane, I've got the radios, you run the checklist. So that now he'll run the checklist and the, he'll bring the captain in while they're running the checklist. If you want the first officer to fly the airplane, you can say, 
your aircraft, you've got the airplane, you've got the radios, I'm going to run the checklist, and then I'm going to check back with you while I'm doing the checklist. I think the captain at this point is taking over the airplane. It's just easier to communicate with ATC about what your intentions are while the first officer runs the checklist. Later on, the voices are going to swap out again. I think the captain hands the airplane back to the first officer or hands the communications back to the first officer. Any of those things are acceptable. It's however you want to run your cockpit. Okay, United 1736, heavy, maintain 900,000, turn right, heading this 080. All right, right turn 080 at 900,000, United uh, 1736. They've been in the beginning phases of putting this uh, engine to rest. United 1736, heavy, understand you're busy right now. When able, let me know uh, fuel remaining and uh, sold. Yes, sir, we'll let you know, United 1736. So again, those are the typical questions. Why is it souls? It just gets rid of any ambiguity. It's not passengers or crew or staff. It's how many total people you have on board. United uh, 1736 has 354 souls and uh, 121,000 pounds of fuel on board. United 1736, Betty, appreciate that. I'm just gonna keep you on this heading for a while. Uh, there's nothing out there for you. So just let me know when you have more information for me as far as when you want to come back in and which runway you want. All right, thanks for the help. Okay, this is an experienced controller. He knows that they're going to get busy. They've got a lot of checklists to run through. Uh, after you get the uh, aircraft under control and you run through that initial checklist where you either shut down the engine or you do something that's appropriate with it, uh, then you do what's called two out and two in. And two out is I have to communicate with two entities outside the airplane, air traffic control, which they have. They've told them their fuel state, souls on board, and what their intentions are. We want to come back to Denver. It's going to take us a little while because we got to do the rest of our checklist. The other out is usually dispatch at your company. You want to communicate with them. Hey, here's what's happening. We're not going to our destination. We're coming back to Denver. I want you to call and make sure that there's people to meet us at Denver, especially the ARF crew, the airport rescue and firefighting crew. We need them on the ground as well. He's also going to communicate that to the air traffic controller. Once he takes care of those two people outside the airplane, now he has to take care of two bits of uh, communication on the inside of the airplane. One is the flight attendants to let them know what they need to do. They need to button up the cabin get everybody in a seat, get prepared to come back in what's called a precautionary landing. This isn't really an emergency on their part. They don't really have to do anything special because they're not anticipating having to evacuate on the ground. It's not as though this airplane is on fire and they're in a panic to get back. The airplane flies just fine on one engine. The other that you have to communicate with is the passengers. At this point, the passengers are probably looking on their screen and going, I don't think we're going to where they said we were going. At that point, you say, hey, folks, it's me in a reassuring voice. It's the captain. Here's what happened. You may have heard the right engine, you know, RPMs come back a little bit. Uh, the airplane flies just fine, but we are going to have to come back to Denver. We're just finishing up our last couple of checklists. We're going to be touching down in less than 12 minutes. I need everybody in a seat. Please follow the instructions of your flight attendants. And that's what I'm going to say on that PA to get everybody reassured, but let them know what's going on next. He's going to tool out for a little while. While he's running United the checklist. 1736 heading, turn to the south here, turn right, hit at 170. All right, 170, yeah, thanks for taking Now, something else is coming up that's going to complicate this flight. This isn't just simply an engine out. This this captain has got his work cut United out for him. 1736 heavy, when you're ready to go, it's going to be around like 26, unless you want something different. No, 26 sounds great, United 1736 heavy. Thank you. Well, uh, we're setting it up and making our calls. United 1736 heavy, no problem. Take your time. Just let me know when you're ready. Setting up and making our calls. Two out and two in. He's getting all that stuff taken care of. It takes a while to do that. He's also at a huge airport out here. So he looks at runway 26 and he says, yeah, that's plenty long enough. He's got to run numbers in his iPad to make sure he's got the landing distance figured out correctly for an engine out landing. But there's a weather situation that's about to change his whole day. United 1736, have you just verified you said number two engine? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, number two, we have... Exceeded. That's the right-hand engine. So it's not completely failed, but uh, we're unable to get uh, any rate of thrust out of it. That's very common. An engine will roll back. You get some thrust, but not enough to make any difference. United 1736 heavy, turn right, hit a 260. 
he was pink though, you know, he's going to be 33, 30. All right, he's basically kind of putting him in a holding pattern right now. 1736 heavy, turn I get a 350. Right, it's not a formal holding pattern, but the controller's just going to keep United turning him around. Heavy, you got a second to talk. Ah, a second to talk. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, so we're getting hit by dust front at the airport right now. We just shut down all arrival routes because we're planning on a lot of go rounds. Uh, there's wind shear alerts on the field right now. The wind is currently 230 at 20. Uh, nothing is hit 260 yet. I just wanted to give you a heads up uh, what we're uh, looking at right now. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's just, uh, we'll continue with the checklist, and then once we're all ready to come inbound, we'll give you a call, and then uh, get a current weather update at that time. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. I just wanted to give you a heads up that it's, uh, in the next couple minutes, it's not looking great right now, but I'm just going to keep you right in the vicinity of the 260 so we can get you on ASAP once you're ready. All right, that sounds great. Uh, I knew it was coming. We are trying to get it done, but it's hard to rush to all this. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And then to throw in and make things more complicated, they're having a weather situation back at Denver. It's not uncommon for Denver at all. Uh, there's a lot of wind shear, microbursts, that sort of thing at Denver. Uh, it happens kind of quickly. Sometimes it'll happen on one port part of the airport and not on another. That's how big the Denver airport is. So he's giving him a heads up that weather is going to be a consideration. It's really a consideration when you're down to one engine. And he said, look, I got a bunch to do out here. Let me get everything completely buttoned up and then I'll check back in with you. We'll see if the weather has passed and we're ready to go in. So, wow, you know, if it wasn't enough to have an engine fail on you, now weather has moved in. United 1736 heavy, turn right heading in 080. 080 on head. So he's giving him just a made up kind of holding pattern while he's out there tooling around waiting for the weather to improve. United 1736 heavy, you turn left heading 350. All right, he's going to bring him back up to the north. He's going to get him kind of set up to get ready to come back to runway 26. Right. Back towards the airport now. He does. I'm assuming they're done with their checklist. All right, back down to the south. He's going to get him lined up for runway 26. And United. And you know, the 17, uh, ready for okay, so now the voice has changed again. So here's what I'm assuming has happened. The captain was flying and talking. The checklist got completely done. Captain got all of his administrative stuff done. They probably checked the weather a couple of times via the computer on board. They like what they see. Now he's going to hand the uh, communications back to the first officer. He's most likely going to fly the airplane. It may have been his leg in the first place, but many times when there's an emergency and an engine out, the captain will We'll fly the airplane. So he's handed it back. Now you hear a change in the voice. They're going to get lined up for the right, approach. Heavy Roger, heading 170. This is the final for the visual approach only 26. Uh, heading 170 to final for the visual only 26. Yeah, I'm coming to you. You know, 1736 heavy. I'm sorry, I have someone else on my ears. I just want to verify it's like spec the visual approach. Spec the visual. Oh, sorry. Spec visual 269. Yeah, I'm Good clarification. It's important. United 1736 heavy, comic approach 120.8. So everything from this moment forward is pretty normal, except they've got an engine out. The weather is fixed itself. Approach hands them off to tower. Everybody seems in a good mood, very relaxed. That's important. They contacted tower. We don't have that uh, audio for you. But they come in, now they get set up, they land uh, on runway 26, uneventful landing on runway 26. Uh, they can either stop on the runway and have the, the um, fire trucks come out and take a look, or they can taxi off. They choose here to taxi off. I personally like staying on the runway. The reason being is I'm a big airplane and I want them to have enough access to get United around 1736 me. 1736 Heavy, Roger, left at Romeo 8. They're all up on 132.35. That's your frequency as well. So uh, they will coordinate directly with you. 
Okay, so he turns off onto Romeo 8, finds a good spot where there's enough room around. Uh, the ARF crew comes around and they, they circle the airplane. Nothing going on on that right engine. They, they like what they see. They give them the thumbs up. What, is the, what does the fire crew do when they check it out? They've got one of those guns that they point. It's a, a, like a thermometer. Um, some of you have it when you're cooking pizzas out in your stone oven outside and you just kind of point a laser inside to see how hot it is inside the oven. They'll point that same laser at the inside of the engine to see what the temperature is like. If they like the temperature, they're going to say, hey, Captain, you're good to go. It's all cool. There's no fire. There's no issues. And then the captain can taxi all the way to the gate. The passengers can get accommodated and everybody is off. Uh, hopefully they make it to their destination uneventfully the next time. Well, this one was quite the episode. They lost an engine shortly after takeoff. They got that taken care of. And then the weather complicated things, but very professional on the part of the crew, very professional on the part of air traffic control. You can see the back and forth in the airplane and how long it takes to get through all the checklists. And the wonderful thing is the Boeing 777 flies just fine on one engine. All right. Now, you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.